Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm your host, Muhammad Hussain, tuning in from Los Angeles, currently volunteering for Wise Islam Southern California. I would like to welcome you all to the Conference 2020, Islam, the Solution in the Time of Confusion. This will be the final session titled, Even Your Voice Shakes. Please also pay attention to two important links ikna.org slash donation and also baraka the first one is definitely we need your help and support and the second one is you can join us at the receive the baraka from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now <clears throat> my first guest i would like to present to you is the wendy diaz and wendy diaz was born in puerto rico embrace islam in the year 2000 she is the director of Abla Mosa Islam, a non-profit outreach program dedicated to creating educational resources about Islam in Spanish language. She is a writer and translator for ICNA and Y Islam. She graduated with honors from the University of Maryland, Baltimore, with a degree in modern languages and linguistics, specializing in education and also studied Arabic in Egypt and in the Islamic Learning Foundation in New York, and Islamic Sciences through, all, uh, through the Al Maghrib Institute, Miska University, Tuba University, and Ikna Sister Wing. She has authored and illustrated seven bilingual Islamic shows. Welcome, Wendy Diaz. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Jazakumullahu khairan. Thank you for having me. I am so excited and thrilled. Um, an honor to be here among all of the distinguished guests. And alhamdulillah, my topic today is the Latino community is waiting on Muslims. And I think it is a timely topic given that we are in the midst of Hispanic Heritage Month. And uh, Hispanic Heritage Month, it goes from September 15th to October 15th. Uh, and it has been in observance in the US since uh, 1989. And the reason for the Hispanic Heritage Month is to honor the culture and contributions of Hispanic and Latin Americans here in the, U in the United States. And I also wanted to bring up what other culture is rooted in Latin America that we know about. Um, what has, what other heritage has shaped our culture as Latin Americans, our languages, our, our way of life, our traditions? And if you don't know the answer to that, then I want you to listen close. What if I propose to you that Hispanic Heritage Month is also Islamic Heritage Month? Would you understand why? Let's talk about, a lot of us already know uh, a lot about the glorious days of our past, of Islamic Spain, of the uh, Islamic civilizations in West Africa, and all the huge impact that those have had on the, the establishment and the, uh, the construction of the United States, and also Latin America, Central America, South America, the Caribbean, what impact it had the Islamic civilizations, Islamic Spain and the Muslims of Africa have had on our culture. So that is why I say that Hispanic Heritage Month is also Islamic Heritage Month. I want, to, I want us to think about this uh, Islamic Spain, we hear about this and we some of us have had the privilege of going to visit Spain and see the structures that are there, the remnants that are left behind from our ancestors. And we're proud to see that. Some of us have taken classes about Islamic Spain, um, about the, the Muslims in Mali, about the Muslim empires 
in West Africa, in Africa, in North Africa. And I want you to think about the presence of Muslims in Spain was something that began as early as only se about 70, 71 years after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Can you imagine that there may have been companions that were still alive during the time that Muslims began entering and conquering Spain? There were tabi'in that were alive during that time. These Muslims established themselves in Spain for 800 years. Think about that. From 710 until 1492. Imagine 800 years of rule. If you want to really put that into context, think about the United States of America. How long has the United States existed as a nation? It's only been around for 244 years, not even 300 years. Okay? So to just speak about Islamic Spain as an era of just a little bit of influence, you know, we have these buildings left behind, we have the architecture, the arts, and all of these things. But look beyond that. Can we really think that the culture that was embedded in, in Spain, in these people, can we really think that it was just done away with like this? That in 1492, when the last Muslims were expelled from Spain, that all of a sudden our culture disappeared? Where did the Muslims go? A lot of the Muslims that were expelled from Spain, they were, first of all, a lot of them were tortured. Some of them were forced to convert to Christianity. Some of them uh, were displaced. They were asked, they were expelled from their homes after generations. Imagine, generations. They were told to go back to where you came from. But guess what? Where they had come from, that was, only, that was 800 years ago that they came. So where did they go? A lot of them, they went to North Africa. A lot of them went to different places, and many of them also came to the New World, the Americas. That includes the U.S. now, that includes the Caribbean, that includes South America, Central America, Mexico, etc. So what we find is that Latin Americans, Hispanics, Latinos, we are descendants of those Islamic civilizations. Not to mention when the slave trade began and there were Muslim captives that were brought from Africa to the Americas to help establish and colonize these countries or what, what is now known as the countries of Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, Ecuador, Cuba, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua, all of these countries were helped, they were established, uh, Muslims helped to establish these countries. A lot of the descendants of Muslims were there establishing these countries. Where did these descendants go? Where did they go? Did they just disappear? No. Latin Americans, Hispanics, Latinos, we are living relics of those ancient Islamic civilizations. So now, are we doing our part to introduce these people to Islam? Are we doing enough to reach out to the Latino community? Or are we too busy othering Latinos? Are we too busy alienating Latinos? Do we think that they're not good enough for our dawah, even though Latin American countries have been receiving immigrants from Muslim majority countries, even before, after the time of Islamic Spain, until now, with the dismantlement of the Ottoman Empire, came a mass migration that continues to this day of Muslims coming from the Middle East, countries that were nations, lands that used to belong to the Ottoman Empire. They migrated to Latin America and there they were received with open arms. I want you to do some homework if you're listening to me out there. Go to Google uh, and look up how many presidents, 
political figures of Muslim descent there were or there have been in Latin America. Can you imagine that in Latin America, Muslims have been able to even hold the highest political positions, more than what they've been able to do here in the United States. So what is the point of this? I want us to realize <coughs> that a group of people that deserve more than, maybe more than anyone, our dawa, our calling, our education to teach them about Islam. And if we want to go ahead and ignore all of our glorious past that we share, Latinos and Muslims, we have a shared past. But if we want to ignore that, at least remember the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, where he said, and certainly we sent into every nation a messenger to teach the people worship Allah and avoid tahut. And some of them we guided and some of them we decreed that they be misguided or they be left in error. So what does that mean? Even if we community as Muslims, we cannot ignore the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a messenger to every single nation, including the nations in Latin America. And thus we have descendants of Muslims walking amongst us here in the United States and in Latin America who deserve that we call them back to Islam, to their roots, that we reintroduce them to what is part of their heritage, our Islamic heritage, our Hispanic heritage. I want to tell you a personal story. Um, there, there are two different extremes I find in the Muslim community. And there's a, there are two extremes and a lot of in between. But I want to tell you something personal that happened to me. When I was a teenager, I was first introduced to Islam at about age 16. And at that time, I met a Muslim family. And that family, I met them through a girl who was in one of my classes in high school. And even though I was a Hispanic girl, Latina, Puerto Rican, in her class, she still befriended me. We became really close. And through her and her family, I started asking questions because I realized that they were Muslim. And so I started asking them, why do you pray the way that you do? Why do Muslim women dress the way they do? What does this mean? What does that mean? And so I was curious and I wanted to know more about Islam and more and more and more. And they would patiently answer my questions. And they welcomed me into their home. And I loved the family, they loved me, and they showed me love and respect. Eventually, from me asking them questions, they gave me some literature to read. A copy of the Quran, a, a book about uh, Islam and Christianity, interfaith dialogue. And because of that, I was able to start reading about Islam and learning and became more and more curious. And because of that family, I eventually embraced Islam. Alhamdulillah. But let me tell you what the other extreme is. After that point in time where I started learning about Islam, I had moved away from where that family lived. And I started working in a mall. And I worked in a clothing store there. And in that clothing store, there, uh, they, you were required to dress the, the dress from whatever clothes the clothing store was selling. So I was a young teenage girl, about 18. I was dressing with the clothes that were sold in that clothing store, things that were normal for a teenage girl at that time. And I used to walk around the mall and say hello to all of the different merchants that were there that worked there as well. And there was a particular gentleman and he was Turkish and he had a, he had a stand, a, a kiosk um, where he sold electronics. And anyway, one day I was having a conversation with him. I said, hello. And I was talking to him and I said, you know, I'm learning about Islam. 
and he was Muslim, Muslim from Turkey. And I told him I'm learning about Islam and maybe, you know, never know, maybe I'll become Muslim one day. I told him this, me as a teenage girl. And you know what the brother said to me? He said, you, you cannot be a Muslim. And I said, why not? And he said, look at you, Puerto Rican girl, look at how you dress. What is this? No, you're not going to be a Muslim. You can't be a Muslim. So, <laughs> subhanAllah, the reason why I tell you these stories is because I want you to understand the mentality that some Muslims have. Alhamdulillah, we have some Muslims who are open and willing to dialogue with people and who have an open mind to welcome others and understand them and allow them to understand us. But then you have other Muslims who will say, you're not good enough to learn about Islam. But subhanAllah, how can you tell someone that they're not good enough to learn about Islam? When the prof some of the companions that we know about, hey, they committed some of the worst crimes. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he wanted to kill the Prophet sallallahu He was on his way to kill the Prophet sallallahu He had his sword drawn and everything. And eventually he became a Muslim. So who are we to say, no, you're not good enough? Audhu billah. So I want to invite all of us to remember that we have an obligation. We are tied to the Latino community, whether we want to admit that or not. And I want us to work together with the organizations that are out there. Alhamdulillah, here in the US, there are huge pockets of Hispanics. Hispanics are the largest growing minority in the United States. We are also the largest growing minority within Islam. And there are plenty of organizations in the areas that are heavily populated with Latinos, such as Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, New Jersey, New York, Chicago, LA. And there are also in between that, there are plenty of other organizations and individuals who are Hispanic or Latino, Latin American Muslims who are working in the field of da'wah. And even if they're not, they are willing to help us to spread the message of Islam. We need to start working together with these people. We need to all work together and uh, support organizations like Why Islam, ICNA, uh, and other organizations that are working with the Hispanic community. And I appreciate your time. Jazakumullahu khairan. MashaAllah, Jazakumullahu khair. It's an amazing story. And uh, I'll let you know, the Los Angeles has a Y Islam chapter called Pork Islam, and uh, we also locally work with the uh, Latino Muslim Lalma, which is another organization. So we have a uh, coordination with them also. Too.